Okay guys, hopefully you love seeing this beautiful Park River Knives bushcrafter as much as I do. But today, the real topic is why I baton. Now this video, I wanted to make because I get a lot of responses and comments telling me, you know, to not be like the other YouTubers and baton wood, you know, or that I shouldn't be batoning or that batoning can break knives. And I just thought I would do a formal response video or a video that really explains why I baton, when I baton, and essentially kind of gives you guys a little bit of a background of batoning itself. And uh, yeah, this isn't perfect. This is, uh, you know, a lot of woods history. So, you know, there's not necessarily perfect beginnings or perfect endings to, uh, you know, uh, this topic itself. But yeah, so let's jump right into it. So first off, I want to note uh, to those people that say, you know, don't be like the other YouTubers and baton. The reality is that uh, actually I didn't learn batoning from... Uh, I didn't learn batoning initially from YouTubers or survivalists like Dave Canterbury. Actually, batoning has been around for quite a while, and originally the first person to really document and talk about the use of batoning a knife in the wilderness, to the extent of my knowledge, was actually Morris Kohansky in his book Bushcraft. And he doesn't exactly show batoning in the way that we think about it, like batoning a log or a piece of cord wood that has already been, you know, cut up into smaller pieces. But he actually talks about, as I've shown in this video, batoning or using a baton to drive a knife through a tree. And this is, uh, you know, can be done in survival situations or situations when you need a hatchet or a hatchet sized tool, but you don't have it. And while, once again, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is an very, this is a very imperfect way. So this may be the only way you can use your knife and, uh, you know, or your knife may be the only tool you have. Your tool, your knife may be the only tool you have to get the job done. So in those types of cases and scenarios, you know, batoning does become necessary. However, like I said, I most certainly did not just pick up on it because it's a cool or cute YouTube trend that all the bushcrafters do and I want to be just like them. That's most certainly not the case. And, uh, you know, if anyone believes that, I will definitely say that's not at all what's going on. So that's how I got started with batoning, and like I said, it's grown from there, and obviously I baton in more than just ways to fell trees, though I have certainly done that in this video and in real life many times. Uh, like I said, if I don't have a hatchet or an axe handy, a knife can get the job done. And so, anyways, uh, that's how I started with batoning, and I still do teach batoning whenever I take people out, especially when I teach fire starting. And the primary reason why is I think there's this condition that some people, and uh, you know, we all practice in different biomes around the world. And bushcrafting, as I've mentioned before, on YouTube is a very global thing. So some bushcrafters or wilderness living people might be practicing their wilderness living in the desert of Arizona, or they might be in the mountains of Colorado, or they might be, you know, in Ohio, Alaska, you know, there's many different places for bushcrafters and wilderness living people, or people who practice wilderness living, to reside. And in some of these climates and conditions, uh, natural tinders are very abundant. Even here in Alaska, I, I teach people to, you know, really look for things such as spruce trees because a lot of the, you know, dead early uh, or very uh, low on the tree uh, branches are very much uh, dead and are a great fire starter. They work really well. They're full of uh, sap that makes them burn fast and it makes them burn hot. And so, you know, when you look at it, you could certainly get by in a particular area like the boreal forest. You can get by in this area without the need to really baton. However, I still teach batoning because there are areas that I've been, even here in interior Alaska, where that's just not the case. Uh, you look around, especially by rivers, and there's not a spruce tree in sight. And so when you start to look around, you know, each biome is a little bit different. And like I said, in some particular areas, you might be able to get away with natural resources just being there. I mean, like I said, where I currently am right now, uh, even though it has been raining for the past week and the ground is very much saturated, anything on the ground is going to be wet. I can look at these spruce trees and they're still high and dry. Uh, 
twigs that I can snap off or uh, little branches that I can snap off and make fire or kindling with very easily. However, some other conditions or some other areas uh, of the world or even other parts of Alaska are not the same way. And what, that's why I like to teach uh, batoning because batoning truly helps you access a part of wood or take a larger piece of wood that you may have not been able to just burn and turn it into a burnable um, and turn it into a size that is burnable easily not just burnable but easily burnable and you can in this way also turn tinder or you can make tinder out of a piece of wood that you probably couldn't have just thrown in the fire as tinder. So the first reason why I like to baton is that it helps give me access to wood or to a particular type or size of wood that can be turned into a material that I may not have direct access to. And even if I don't, or even if I do, it may be more easy for me to use my resources that I have right now than it is in to make kindling out of the wood I have at hand as opposed to going and tracking and gathering the materials, the twigs, the little things that I need for tinder uh, to start a fire. In addition to this, it also can unlock dry wood. A lot of times, as has been discussed in other uh, batoning videos or videos relating to batoning, dry wood is almost, or if you do deal with a situation where there has been a lot of rain, Batoning to get into dry wood that is at the core of the wood is usually a very tenable option. So those are a few good reasons to baton. Now a lot of people are also concerned about the uh, steel or the blade breaking or being damaged. And while that is certainly a case, and you know if you spend any time on YouTube, you can certainly find videos of knives, even by reputable manufacturers, snapping in half or tangs breaking, blades chipping, you know, really getting damaged uh, to the point of failure uh, due to batoning. And that is, like I said, a certainly something that can happen. By and large, the modern metal urgy that we have is very tough. I mean, even, you know, little Mora clippers back in the 80s is what uh, Morse Kohansky was using to baton down trees. And nowadays we have knives such as this Bushcrafter that is made out of CPM3V. And CPM3V, for those who don't know, is a tool steel. So that means it's a steel meant to work on, when hardened properly, is meant to work on other steels. So my concern level for this blade breaking or having a catastrophic failure uh, due to me driving it through a piece of wood is extremely low because this steel is designed, like I said, when hardened it properly to work on other steels. So technically, this is the type of knife you could beat through steel if you really wanted to. Now that would probably damage the edge because obviously the edge is more fragile than the rest of the steel stock, but make no mistake that blades made out of things like 20CV, CPM3V, even S35VN are very tough steels and you know batoning them through a piece of wood is nowhere near pushing the actual limits of our modern steels. So to that end I will say yes improperly heat treated blades can fail under pressure um, and there's always exceptions to the rule but by and large when you baton modern steel today it is not going to fail. It is not going to break. It is not going to have a catastrophic uh, failure on you. And that's just the way it is. And honestly, there's not many knives in my collection that I haven't batoned. Actually, I don't think there are any uh, knives in my collection that I haven't batoned, at least you know to a limited extent. Uh, and none of them have failed. Even, like I said, things like the Mora Companion or Clipper series of knives series of knives that have, you know, a rat tail tang, they're very thin, and overall we would probably suspect to be a rather weak blade. Anyways, this hopefully has served as an explanation of why I baton. Now I want to make it clear that when I do things like batoning on my channel, I'm not trying to make, you know, more batoners, I'm not trying to teach it per se, however, I do encourage learning how to baton, even 
even if you only just learn how to baton and you know you practice it every once in a while i still think it is a valuable skill and that's why i still teach it to people when i teach firecrafting because like i said there are places that i've been even here in alaska where you know you look around you're not going to find any small readily accessible tinder materials and when that's the case you do have to make your own tinder materials and so it's good and it's important to one have a tool that can do that for you or that you can use in that way i should say and secondly it's good to have that knowledge and that ability to understand what to look for how to baton and how to properly you know toothpick down wood and turn it into a tinder so that you can use it for your fire so guys this has been my basis to batoning why i baton and like i said if you decide to baton good for you if you decide not to baton also good for you however i do always encourage and recommend knowing how to baton and be proficient with that knife skill